Happy Fountain Pen Day 2020. Since 2012, the first Friday of every November have been designated Fountain Pen Day. So today, the 6th of November 2020, is Fountain Pen Day. So today I would like to recommend, based on my personal experience, which pens or what kind of pens would I recommend if you are coming back or a first timer um, tr in, in terms of trying fountain pens. My first time using fountain pens when is when I was it was when I was eight. I just came back from Belgium at the time my dad was a master's student in Leuven and I had to repeat um, primary one so I had to learn how to write again this time in Indonesian instead of in Dutch and for one reason or another we were uh, mandated fountain pens and we were taught how to write I think you call it long forms so um, and I remember the pen had flex nib. I didn't realize that those nibs are called flex nibs. Uh, I just thought that all nibs are like that. When you press it, sort of the tip of it split into two and I used to remember playing with it, just pressing it against the paper um, on and off, was feeling quite amused looking at, looking at it. And I remember it was a Parker pen with what I believe is a piston filler. You basically twist the back of it like this one here and then you dip the the tip here into a ink bottle and you twist the back and it sucked um, the ink I think the uh, ink was pelican so I remember the two most prominent memory of fountain pen and ink brand was pelican and Parker so anyway for me personally this was my first fountain pen I actually my first purchase of a fountain pen is actually the Kakuno Pilot but uh, long story short, this particular Twisby is the first one I've ever used after 40 odd years. The reason why I would recommend these is because this uh, Twisby is made in Taiwan, I believe. I know that a friend of mine who is a fountain pen enthusiast as well said that years ago Twisby would fall apart um, within a very short time of using it. But now um, it, there is consensus that um, they are very well built and they're re relatively affordable and they're very very easy to use and very easy to clean so you basically dip this into your bottle and you draw the piston here and the ink will be filled um, and you're done suck it in and you're done and I have a video of my first time in 40 odd years um, filling up fountain pen again I'll link it up right here in the end of this video and you're good to go it was it's the equivalent of point-and-shoot camera so this is one that I filled um, this is a standard um, size here this is the 580 diamond I believe the diamond series is named after the scratch uh, faceted um, what you call a demonstrator here where you can see the ink so so for ease of use for price point as well as for ink capacity um, the other standard one that is easy to fill as well but in terms of ink capacity these guys uh, converter are much less I'll show you here so as you can see here, it is currently filled with the Jacques Urban um, shimmering ink there. You can see it shimmers against the light. I'm not quite sure if you can see that. But you see the difference in incapacity there. I found that when you're just starting out, um, it feels very um, brief before you have to refill your ink when you're on a converter like this. Um, and you kind of felt like, you know, I thought I just I just filled it up and um, when you first started at least when I first started with fountain pens again it's nice to be able to just get used to it get the hang of it with the incapacity like this you have a lot of time to get the hang of everything before you have to start um, refilling and for whatever reason I found the refilling process to be a bit stressful cleaning as well it's not that difficult but uh, it is quite fiddly and uh, I am accident prone. Um, I am quite, um, you know, I'm one of those people who are accident prone. So um, doing all these things can be quite stressful. Um, so.
so for that reason, um, for that reason, again, in terms of incapacity, it means that you can just enjoy getting used to um, the fountain pen, your fountain pen, before you have to start refilling. I mean, you can argue that perhaps learning how to fill and clean and flush um, more often rather than less often as you start your fountain pen journey is probably better. It's a good habit to establish because you're going to be doing that over and over again. You can see the sparkle a little bit on the feeder there. Um, so this sparkly ink like this is potentially, potentially a bit harder to clean. You have to clean them more vigorously because of the sparkly material tend to clog a bit more. But we can talk about that in a different video. So, um, let me see here. Right, so, okay. So this is an example of, this is a Lamy. There you go. So again, the ink capacity you can imagine. Um, there's a lot more ink here. And of course, this is a lot more ink there. But this particular pen is a little bit more fiddly and I'll show you why in a different video. Um, I find this quite fiddly, but the ink capacity here is ginormous. It's wonderful because you can just write and write and write and write and you don't have to worry about refilling, especially if you write a lot. So, um, so that's the one there. Right, so ultimately it is of course personal um, uh, choices depending on your um, inking habit, depending on your comfort level in terms of flushing, cleaning, refilling, depending on uh, how much you write at, at any one time, uh, depending on whether getting the hang of fountain pens you prefer to um, get the hang of cleaning, refilling a lot more often at the beginning get it over and done with, or whether like myself, I prefer to just enjoy the flow of um, gaining my confidence around fountain pens by just enjoying using it without the interruptions of constant maintenance, um, simply having a, a longer gap with enjoyment such as this one here. So incapacity is one, price point is the second, and the third reason is ease of maintenance, ease of filling, flushing, cleaning, etc. In terms of ink, um, a lot of people would, would uh, suggest that you buy little samplers. Uh, I myself have started with this one here. Whether it's the best way to do it or not, I'm not sure. For me, I haven't regretted it. This costs about 20 New Zealand dollars, so that's about maybe 15 US dollars. I bought this from a local New Zealand distributor. This is Pilot's um, ink called Irosi Shuku. Hiroshi Suku, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, and the color is called Yamabudo or uh, Mountain Grapes or Wild Grapes, which is basically the color of red wine. And I have been quite delighted with this one, not only that the swatch color here is very um, much the same as how the ink is on paper, especially once it's dried, but also because it's quite fast to dry. If there's any, if you are not uh, keen on those sampler uh, inks that you can buy in little tubes and each of them are probably about a couple of a couple of converters um, the amount of a couple of fill the standard converter such as the one I showed you here and so you can try a variety of different um, make different colors etc if you're not keen on going that route I can highly recommend this size which is only about 15 mil um, so that's about a dollar a mil, so arguably um, a dollar US a mil, arguably that's a bit on the expensive side. Uh, but as I said, it's it's one way to do it. It's probably not the most economical way to do it, but this is how I ended up trying my first ink and I have not regretted it one bit. So yeah, so, yeah, so hopefully um, that helps. If you have any questions, um, post down below and um, until our next pen video. Happy Fountain Pen Day 2020.